Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, welcome back to another edition of Wednesday's Word. I know it's been a while. We've been pretty busy uh, trying to figure out where the army is going to put me and trying to get an apartment and get settled in and everything. I do apologize that it's been so long, but now I should be back to doing these every week. No excuses. Um, currently at my mom's house in Albion, New York. Just kind of chilling in the back room. So if it looks a little different, that's why. But uh, God is good. And despite all of the craziness and all of the things that could be looked at negatively that are going on in my life right now, you know, he's good and he's working. He's still moving. He's still God. And that's all that matters. So today we're going to look at uh, John 10 verses 22 through 30, where Jesus is in the temple complex during the Feast of Dedication, and he's talking to the Pharisees about being the Messiah. And, of course, the Pharisees still don't understand, uh, but we're going to get into that in just a minute. First, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we are able to get into your word, and we're able to have your Holy Spirit in us to guide us into all truth and to show us the deeper meaning and principles of your word so that we can grow closer to you and that we can know your heart and so that we can live by faith in obedience to your word. Father, help us to do that today. Cultivate a faith in us, Lord. As we get into your word and we look at who Jesus is and uh, what that means for us, help us to hear the shepherd's voice help us to know the shepherd's voice and to be known by the shepherd lord and that's absolutely vital is to be known by you jesus please forgive us of our sins and wash us clean in your blood in jesus name amen all right john chapter 10 verses 22 through 30. then the festival of dedication took place in jerusalem and it was winter Jesus was walking in the temple complex in Solomon's colonnade. Then the Jews surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. I did tell you, and you didn't believe, Jesus answered them. The works that I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish, ever. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given, me, who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand and the Father and I are one. Okay, so first, I think it's important to note uh, what the festival of dedication is and it's what we know today as Hanukkah uh, also known as the festival of lights and why is this important because it celebrates uh, Jewish freedom from oppression and the rededication of the temple to God and I don't think that Jesus being in the temple complex during this rededication of the temple uh, was any accident um, Jesus was very calculated in all that he, he did. Everything was for a reason. Everything was because of the Father and what the Father directed him to do. And the Jews had a belief that the Messiah would ultimately free Israel from all oppression and basically be this world superpower and everybody would be under them and they would live on as God's chosen people, free from oppression and ruling over everybody. But um, obviously, Jesus came as the Messiah, yes, but not to free Israel or anyone from physical oppression uh, in the sense that they were looking for a ruling king, a mighty king. But he came to free us from spiritual oppression from sin and ultimately he came to overcome death so that we could have eternal life with him and as the jews rededicated the temple to god it's important to know that we have become the temple of god that 
the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit now dwells inside of us. And we have to dedicate ourselves, every every part of ourselves, every bit of our, every fiber of our being, and every part of our lives to God's purpose and His glory. And we have to uh, allow God to dwell in us in this this temple and have His way with us. So then the Pharisees asked Jesus to plainly tell them if He was the Messiah, and Jesus knew that their hearts were hardened and that their eyes were blind. And I guess, you know, we have to look at our own lives and ask ourselves, uh, well, ask God to show us in what ways are our hearts hardened and what ways are our spiritual eyes blinded uh, to the truth of who Jesus really is. Because we often hear different things about who Jesus is or you know, what the Bible means or who God is. You know, we get all of these different things and we allow circumstances to distract us. We allow our situations, our personal situations to harden our hearts and and to keep the truth of who Jesus really is from us. But here Jesus, he reminds them, he says that he's already told them plainly uh, who he was, that he was the Messiah, that he was... From God and that makes me think you know we have to ask ourselves what has God told me plainly what are the things that I know God has shown me in my life whether it's uh, sin that needs to be dealt with whether it's uh, calling that he has on my life whether it's um, some sort of relationship that isn't right with him that needs to be dealt with whatever it may be we have to look at ourselves and examine ourselves to see what are the things that God has told us plainly. And obviously we can look at his word and we know exactly who he is because of what he says about himself in his word. So if you ever have any questions about, well, what has God told me plainly? Number one, first and foremost, go to the word and ask the Holy Spirit to show you the plain reality of, of God and what he is wanting you to do or what he's wanting to show you of himself why do we refuse to believe or to walk in faith of who we know jesus to be so again like i said before you know we get all of these ideas of who jesus is and it can be the right idea it can be the right thing but sometimes we know the truth of who Jesus is, but we don't walk in that truth. You know, we don't embrace the freedom of Christ over sin. We don't embrace the freedom of Christ over uh, spiritual battles like depression or fear or anxiety. We don't embrace the truth of, of Jesus in walking in faith, whether it's sharing our testimony, whether it's helping somebody in need. We don't do the practical things uh, to walk and the truth of who Jesus is. And I, as I always say, I'm preaching to myself first because I am guilty of these things, you know. And I'm trying to allow God to work in my heart, to work in my life, to embrace and walk in the truth of who Jesus is, who I know and have experienced Jesus to be. And we need to ask ourselves, in what ways do we compromise in accepting the fullness of Jesus' identity? You know, so often we hear people say, well, I'm a Christian, well, I go to church, or, you know, I read the Bible once in a while, or I've, I've prayed the sinner's prayer, or whatever it might be, you know, but we neglect the, to put on the fullness of Jesus. We neglect to take up our cross daily and follow him. We neglect to get along with him and to seek his face. We neglect to uh, fast, we neglect to pray, we neglect to worship even in difficult times, we neglect to share the good news of Jesus with those around us. We forget to do these things. We don't want to do the hard things. We don't want to step outside of our comfort zones and do the hard things and be fully identified in who Christ is and what that means to be a follower of Christ. And, and I think that's so vital that we, especially here in America, where we are so prone to itchy ear preaching that we don't want to accept the truth and the fullness of what it means to truly be a follower and a sheep of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. 
So then Jesus told them that the works he has done for uh, the works he has done for and because of his father are what testify to who he is. So we have to ask ourselves, what works have we seen that testify who to who Jesus is? You know, for me, I've seen him pull me out of the dark pit. I've seen him provide for me physically. I've seen him answer prayers, you know. Yeah, there's still a lot going on in my life that I could say, well, Lord, you know, where are you in this situation? But I know because of the works that I've already seen that he is working. Whether we see it or not, whether we feel it or not, we can rest assured in our faith and our hope in Jesus because we have seen him work. We have seen him work in the lives of others. We've seen him work in our own lives. So, one another way to do this is that we have to look at the everyday and mundane things that point to God. You know, it could be something as simple as um, maybe we're in a bad mood someday and God sends somebody to just to say hello or to say, hey, how you doing? You know, or maybe we receive a phone call or a text message from a family or friend mem- or a family member or friend, you know, that um, we weren't expecting. God can use these simple everyday things to point us back to him. And if we just look outside and just look at nature and we look at creation and the people around us, everything points back to God. And the, the even the depravity of man, where we see this constant um, rebellion against God, where we see this crying out of... Uh, discomfort and disdain toward God that in and of itself points us to God because if God wasn't real and if his word wasn't true then people wouldn't have any reason to go out of their way to fight against him to protest him to argue against him you know people wouldn't feel offended by him because why would you be offended by something that's not true you know I don't get offended by lies right I get offended when the truth comes in and tells me what's wrong or tells me what I need to do. That, to me, that points to God. So we have to be able to see God in the everyday mundane things. Then Jesus said that the Pharisees don't believe him or his works because they were not his sheep. So we have to ask ourselves, are we truly his sheep? Lord, examine my heart. Show me if I truly am your sheep. Show show me if I truly do walk in faith and obedience to you. Do we take him at his word and believe his works? Again, we can point to things in our own lives or things in other people's lives. We can point to the word of God and say, this is how I know that Jesus is who he is. And this is why I believe these works. This is why I believe what he says about himself. This is how I know that he is the truth, that he is the good shepherd. True sheep hear God's voice. And there are a lot of voices in the world. There's a lot of distractions that want to pull us left or right or this way or that. And they they try to keep us from knowing who the real shepherd is, who the real voice is. And then sometimes they even sound very similar to Jesus. There's a lot of false teachers and false prophets out there who uh, have what the Bible says, a a form of godliness, but they deny its power. You know, they, they... teach and preach these things that are kind of uh, based on the Bible, kind of have a good sound to it, they feel good, they look good, you know, and we get those things mixed up with the actual voice of the real shepherd. We have to know his voice and we can't be deceived or distracted by false voices. Get in the word, seek the Holy Spirit, pray, meditate on the word, pray through the word, Praise God, worship Him, you know, talk with other believers. Anything we can do to help us better identify and know the voice of the shepherd. Jesus told the Pharisees that He knows His sheep. And in Matthew 7 23, He says that not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will be let in. And He'll say, Yeah, you might have done all of these things in my name, but I never knew you. I never knew you. Turn away from me, you who do lawlessness. So many people think that they're sheep of Jesus. Many people think that they're on the right path, that they're doing the right thing. But Jesus doesn't know them. 
We might know of Jesus, but we don't know Jesus. And if Jesus doesn't know us, then that's it. It's game over. You know, so we have to make sure that we know the true shepherd and that the true shepherd knows us. You know, we have to be sheep, not goats. And that's in Matthew uh, 25, verses 33, 34, 41, and 46. That the sheep, sheep are going to take care of other people. And sheep are going to faithfully follow and obey what the shepherd says. So we, we might be standing on the left as goats thinking that we're good to go but then on the right we see the real sheep we see we see the people who the shepherd really does know and we want to be on the right with the real sheep and jesus tells the pharisees that his sheep have eternal life and that no one will snatch them from him so if we truly are sheep of the good shepherd no one can snatch us away no one can steal our eternal life our gift of god a gift from god and living the life of a true sheep gives us the security in eternal life. We don't have to worry. If we're following the voice of the shepherd, if we're doing according to his word, if we're walking and talking and, and desiring according to the word of God, we don't have to worry about our eternity because we are sheep and we are safe within the, the sheep pen of the true shepherd. And we are under, if we're under the protection of the Father, then we never have to worry about the attacks of the enemy or the world or the flesh because Jesus has overcome those things, right? The true shepherd has overcome the enemy. He's overcome the world. He's overcome the flesh. And if we are under the protection of the Father, we too have overcome those things and we can never be snatched away. Yeah, we can walk away from the sheepfold, sure, but we can never be snatched away because we are under the protection of the Father. So we have to willingly step outside of the fold in order to surrender that right to eternity, in order to surrender our place with within the sheep pen with the good shepherd. So we have to know his voice and follow him. Jesus and the Father are one. And there are Pharisees back there were Pharisees back then and there's Pharisees now who don't want to believe that Jesus and the Father are one. They say, Oh well God is God, but Jesus was a good man. He was a good prophet, a good teacher or what have you. But God the Father, and God the Son, Jesus, are one, just as the Holy Spirit is also one with them. So it's three in one, y'all. We can't pick and choose what we believe. Jesus is doing the will of the Father, and if we do what Jesus does, then we too are doing the will of the Father. So know his voice. Do what's right. Walk faithfully according to the word and the will of God. Remain in the shepherd, and the shepherd will remain in you. And Forget all of the other voices around you. Forget the distractions that would seek to take you away from the protection of the Father. That's all I've got. Uh, hopefully you found some good from this. And hopefully it will bless you as much as it has blessed me to get into this study. And as always, please like and subscribe. Share this channel. Share this video. Um, look for my book. Um, that's about it. All right, I love you guys. Thank you.